let's talk about Oli Moss. Hello. Hello, Oli. Hey. Uh, so you've been on the podcast a couple of times back in the poster days. Back in the old poster days. Uh, and we <laughs> had some. Is that how you refer to that? Era? That's my poster <laughs> That's period. <pun>. Yep. <laughs> And here's an Ollie Moss poster. Yeah, I brought you some stuff. There you go. Look at that. It looks like Spider-Man's face, but really it's a bra and two boobies. Yeah. Bloody clever. A high point. Of my I was going to say, is that the word? If you had the... to pick out one piece for Chris to hold <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the retrospective, that's the one that I want on the show. I, 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 <laughs> the I have an, uh, an Ollie Moss on my wall in my living room. Yes. Uh, the print that's I the bought. the first time we met. The day I met you in Austin, Texas, which is your brilliant American werewolf in London poster. Which people should Google and have a look at because it's so. You, but you didn't understand. No, it you saw his British eyes. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, that. it's really good. We've done oh, that I enough times. <laughs> really yeah. We've said, yeah, we're we talked about that enough times. Oh, yeah, we can um, so, what have you been up to since you've been on the podcast? I've been making a video game. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's, <laughs> so, so we I, can I, talk we about actually, this video game a bit. Yeah, you put a poster of that in. We actually we announced it a while ago, but. Um, we sort of unveiled the first trailer mm -hmm. at PAX uh, at the beginning of August, and it's a video game called Firewatch, mm -hmm. and it's made by a company that I um, joined called Campo Santo, yeah. which consists of myself, um, Jake Rodkin and Sean Vanneman, who were the creative leads on The Walking Dead Season 1, uh, Nels Anderson, who was the lead gameplay designer on Mark of the Ninja, and a bunch of other people who have made similarly brilliant games. It's quite, quite an For impressive example, like, team then. Yeah, Jane was the lead artist on The Cave at Double Fine, and Chris was also at Double Fine doing music. He did the soundtrack for um, Gone Home and The Cave and a couple of other sort of smaller indie games, and his work is incredible. And, it's, and uh, Will Armstrong, who was the lead uh, player interaction guy on Bioshock 2. Okay, so, so we have a pedigree. So yeah, it's a it's a team of people who are much smarter yeah. and more talented than I am, which is really nice. Well, I know Marty's <laughs> been to um, see it. Yeah, Marty's, and, and Marty Mitch, came around. Yeah, yeah, Marty's a great guy. Yeah, Marty's really nice. He's, he's bought a nice cardigan. Yeah, he's, and he's got he's a great the king beard. Of the cardigans, yeah, yeah, so and nice. I, think I want to give him a hug every time I see yeah, him. Yeah, so Mitch, so Mitch saw it at PAX, I believe, as well. Yeah. Um, and an original write-up, um, Bioshock was kind of um, referenced. Yeah, referenced quite a lot. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, well, it's a yeah, it's just like nobody knows anything about the game. It's, well, it's hard to it's hard to talk about really because there's not much else out there that's really like it. Yeah. I mean, you're probably used to hearing that a lot, right? You get. Well, no. Well, I watched I the mean, trailer for it. Yeah. I, that's what I thought. I thought I've never seen anything like this the, before. The trailer is very. The trailer is sort of almost like a tone piece. It, mm, it doesn't yeah. really show much of, of what's in the actual game, except obviously like the first person climbing and that sort of stuff, which is in there. Uh, it's a mystery game. It's a first person mystery game set mm. in the Wyoming wilderness. And the best way I would think to describe it is that it's sort of like. Bioshock or, or Metroid Prime, which is without the combat. It's more focused on storytelling, uh, focused on like building a relationship with another human being that you have on the end of this radio that you can use at any point to talk about things in the environment. So, like, so this is a female character, and she's stationed at another she's watch. She's your tower? supervisor. Yeah. She's, she's supervisor. She's your boss. Okay. So um, imagine like imagine Bioshock, where Atlas wasn't just uh, a non-interactive voice on the end of a radio. Imagine mm -hmm. if you could talk back and change your relationship with them, change how you feel about that character and how that character feels about you by having dialogue trees in the middle of the world while you're doing other things. So it's it's very much a sort of dialogue tree driven game, but you don't you never stop the you, gameplay you to, see it, yeah. to do that. You don't get this sort of static moment where you choose. It's just very interactive. Very so how does that function? So say you're exploring the wilderness, you yeah. can call them up at any like yeah, certain so points. You, you see a particularly interesting thing, like uh, you find something, you find a, a book in the middle of nowhere, you can talk about it. So you you could be walking and she could just call you up to have a conversation or you look at a particularly beautiful vista that you see and you can go, oh, like check out this place. And she goes, oh, I know where you are. You must be here. And it's and all of those things but it's not she'll remember everything that that you say and uh to her and you will like build a relationship mm -hmm. with her based on based on uh your past conversations so how did you get involved with it originally oh, were right. you approached or were you is this well i was always friends i was always friends with um jake and sean well actually specifically just jake um because god ages ago when he was working on um sam and max at telltale uh, I think I tweeted, I think I said, oh, I really like this game. Everyone should play it if you're a fan of like old school adventure games. And I think he followed me because he liked my work. He's, yeah. a, really, he's a graphic designer as well. He's really um, into that stuff. And he just, we just got in contact and he was a really good guy to talk to because he'd give me amazing like critiques on stuff I was working on. Like he wouldn't just blow smoke up my ass and say, oh, it's really good. Yeah. I'd say, he's like, mm, maybe you should change this, yeah. this, and this, and this. So those people are like really useful to, <laughs> to have on the old contact list. So I just stayed in contact with him for ages and then eventually they said oh we're thinking about leaving telltale would you be interested in 
working on a game. And I was like, yeah, okay, let's give it a shot. So I met up with them um, shortly after they left and we talked about it and it seemed like we all wanted to make a similar sort of thing. So I just took the opportunity and here I am. And what have your responsibilities on the game been? Uh, I'm guessing it's mainly well, designed... Well, mostly, mostly art direction. Yeah. Um, so I'll do concept art and I'll send it over to Jane and Jane will do an amazing, incredible job of making it look exactly how I wanted it to or usually better. So yes, yes, like that, that's good. But it's all, it's all her. She's, she's amazing. Um, but also the thing that I'm most surprised is, about is how much input I'm having in other areas that I wasn't expecting to. Like I was on really, really early at the start. It was just me, Sean, Jake and Nell. So, so a lot of the story beats, a lot of the actual narrative and some of the gameplay design and stuff that I've had um, like input into, which is really fun. That's the most fun part for me because the other stuff is just stuff I've done before. But yeah, like yeah. Learning new things is like so invigorating. It's really nice to wake up every morning and work on something that like, I'm the least experienced and most stupid person in the room at all <laughs> times. So just having other people say, oh, no, no, do it like this. This is what you should be doing and is great. So when you're submitting designs for the game, concepts and so on, are you mm. working in the same way that you've always worked? Or are you adapting it to work in a well, new medium? Uh, well, I've never really um, I've never really done like concept art before, so it's yeah. totally new for me in that respect, just like painting a forest. It's not like about designing like a typographical yeah. piece. You're, you're communicating totally different things. You're not you're communicating like a gameplay experience rather than like uh, advertising a film or something. So yeah, it, it is totally different. It's like I have to design, like draw an area, but also think about like how is the player going to, what from what angle are they going to approach this to get like the best shot? Are we going to give them like the choice to enter an environment from like three or four different um, angles and is, it's got to look great and yeah. interesting and communicate what they need to do from each of those. So it's actually like a totally new and amazing challenge. Like I really, really enjoy it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm interested because uh, the first time I met you was actually we got talking about your love of games and that's how mm. you end up coming on the podcast because I think you listened to the podcast before mm. we met. And so you were someone that was designing posters and artwork but really loved games. And now, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners really love games but don't work in the industry. So what's the reality of making <laughs> a game like compared to kind the of reality, what you God. Well, the first imagined? Thing, the first thing that uh, Jake told me when I first started, he said like, just to sort of cast off any aspirations that I had, was that games are terrible when you're making them. They're terrible and they're awful and they're rubbish until like the last month. It all com it comes or, together. And then it all comes together and you can mm. see. I mean, there's the, like, yeah. Game, and Sean put it in a really nice way. He said that games don't want to be made. Every time you change something or move something that you think is going to be great, it breaks five other things in the game. So it's, it's a weird uphill battle of implementing cool new things that are going to be really exciting with then like figuring out what the actual reality of that breaking everything else is. It's tough. It's like nitty gritty. There's a lot of like tweaking and noodling around and figuring out the best way to to do something that in any other medium would be really easy to do. So it, it's it's weird, but it's also when you get everything working, when everything comes together, when you've been working with eight, ten other, like other talented people who are all really good at their thing, and the vision like all coheres into one single like product it's amazing it's like really 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 fun that's the best part of it and what was it like when you put the trailer out there for the first time because I'm, I'm sure you're checking all the feedback and looking at comments and things yeah like, yeah yeah what was it what was it like putting your baby out there in the world it was a relief because we've been working on it we sort of we put out that we were working on it we put out some artwork and there was sort of like because of who Sean and Jake and the other people on the team are there was like some immediate interest we're not which is actually really nice like as um as an indie studio to have like a bit of um clout I suppose behind mm. from certain people yeah they, they and because they've got their own successful podcast with idle thumbs we had like a sort of inbuilt hand base so there was a sort of anticipation for like what is this game actually going to be so it's nice to get that stuff out there and have people respond in a positive way because when you're working in a vacuum and it's taking up all your life and you're having a really good time it's great but you don't know if people are actually going to like it or not mm. so I mean we, th we thought we were working on something good uh we still think we're working on something good. It's just nice for people to see it and to read the positive feedback and like realize that maybe we're possibly onto something. Right? Because I mean, the main thing for us is that we got a lot of coverage in places where we weren't expecting to get coverage. Like we got picked up in like Time Magazine and uh, Entertainment Weekly, which shows that like maybe hmm. uh, a, a combat through, yeah. light, uh, sort of no combat yeah. exploration, like relationship puzzle adventure game is. Hmm 
what people maybe sort of like other people want mm, or maybe, the, maybe what the mainstream interest, wants yeah. maybe what the mainstream wants exactly because mm. uh, so many of these titles just kind of disappear under this like it, it, because they're so niche but it feels like maybe something the mainstream is ready for something a bit more I mean obviously like Gone Home winning so many Game of the Year yeah. awards is uh, it's like a good indicator that I think like the, the, the va- Vanishing of Ethan Carter is getting great reviews at the moment yeah 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 that's, that game seems really cool I played the first 10 I haven't minutes. played it at all yet <laughs> I play games very differently now since I've been making this game I played that game and I immediately Were ran to the nearest pot- tree and was like looking at it really close. Like, <laughs> God, this game is gorgeous. How did they do this? How did they do this? I need it's to like you have my steal these ideas. Yeah. And the game was constantly like, no, 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 look at this clue. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to go look at this grass over here and see how, <laughs> and see how they made that work. So what's going to happen to the poster work and the, you know, the design work? I'm still doing that on the side. Obviously mm-hmm. not. Obviously I don't have as much time mm. for that. But there's much less time sitting on my ass like playing video games pretending I'm working now now it's like an honest 9 to 5 mostly right. it's not my first, I came here today it's not my first day off like, oh, really? Really? It's, yeah. <laughs> it's really, it's really so, nice have so you not, not seen human beings for a while I haven't been left out of my house it's, I've just sort of oh we put you into a darkened studio are, yeah. are, the, are you working long hours no I mean I'm work, like, it, it depends on yeah. on what the deadlines are mm. like usually I try to keep a fairly decent like I get up at 8 at my desk 8.30 work until six or seven um and then obviously because of like the time difference because the studio is in san francisco so usually mm. i'm i'm sort of around and like maybe i'll chat to a call in the evening but yeah it's mostly mostly try and keep it fairly mm. fairly business n- normal yeah. like, otherwise i just go insane and i think the work i think the work would like suffer massively yeah like uh, a lot of the people on the team are talking about i mean obviously i'm a game dev baby and i don't know anything but they're talking about crunch and how crunch is, is a usual response yeah. to deadlines but actually it's mostly counterintuitive because people are stressed and keep putting in bad work that, yeah. that breaks everything else and leads to more crunch Problems, time yeah, yeah so. as, as art director would you be affected by crunch in um, the same way yeah because we'll always be finding things like oh crap like we need <laughs> we need this texture now because like there's so many things like at the moment we're just placeholder textures everywhere yeah, right okay. and then i know that some of those will ship in the game because we'll we've because it's we'll yeah, yeah. yeah. like, like, like oh it's fine it's fine it's it's that's it's been that way since the start and no one's actually noticed so yeah i'm sure uh and also you know art director but it's a small team i have to wear yeah every, every, I mean, everyone has to wear a lot of hats so roles, yeah. if i'm not directing art i'll be QA. I'll just be playing the so, game over and over again and trying to break it in as many mm. ways as I can. To so, where's the game at currently? Um, the game is currently. What, how do you mean? In terms of percentage complete and like. Oh, it's tough the, to say. I mean, like, uh, we are on track. We're actually kind of a little bit ahead of schedule. We have the sort of the first environment really built out and almost polished to the point where you, we could get anyone in off the street to, to play it now, which cool. is a really good position to be in. Um, we'll wait for that invite. Wait for that invite, of course. But uh, with games, it's a little different from, like, say, writing a novel or a book because once all of those systems are in place, once you've built like, one area, you then start like extrapolating that outward because you can just build the content much, much quicker once you have a pipeline Basis. and all the systems in place to then go ahead and like make the rest of the game. So yeah, we, we're on we're on target at the moment. It's actually looking good. I think it might be good. I think it's going to be good. And it, it, <laughs> actually, I was under explicit. I was under explicit instructions not to hype it up. So, okay, so that's not hype. Okay, we'll, cut, we'll cut that it's out. Definitely not just hype games. Just not hype. Um, so, do we have any idea when it's going to come out, or is it? Uh, well, is we're saying twenty fifteen at the moment. So right. that's that's all I can say. On Fair enough. Note. And is there any truth to the rumours that your namesake Ollie Mers will be doing the soundtrack? Uh, he might he might be cameoing. <laughs> Sorry, lead, lead voice actor. So lead voice actor. Oh, that'd be brilliant. Ollie Murs mode. You, just... you should put like a little Ollie Murs hat somewhere in the forest. Oh yes, like a little fedora. Like, like, like he's been buried. He's been eaten by a bear, and you just find like you a find mold. This, you find this carcass with like some slightly turned up trousers and uh, uh, a, a mold port pie hat. Shirt. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's great. That's great. Speaking idea. of shirts, did you not get the uh, memo about green and navy? Tops. No, I got the memo about wearing my it's Babadook shame. No. t-shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> we probably should wear a Babadook t-shirt this week, so everyone, there's a Babadook t-shirt. It's one of my, our favourite films the last month or so. I saw a uh, poster for it on the tube on the way over, and I thought uh, it, was, it looked like it had a lot of five stars on that poster. Yeah, yeah it's, it's most... really good. It's really interesting. Like They're marketing it as a monster movie, like the Babadook's going to come into your house and but it's much but more it's not really a, it's is not, it a sweet horror film uh, it, um, well, it's no? not a sweet horror film it's, okay. um, it's a psychological horror film it's, it reminded me of um, like The Haunting or The Innocence or the RKO movies and stuff okay. like that it's uh, much more about ambiguity mm. and 
psychological states than it is like this thing's going to come out of your wardrobe oh wow um, okay cool it's a big that it's a metaphor mm. oh my god i'm filmed it's with a horror metaphor. film that's that so is a clever. metaphor that's so clever <laughs> uh well we segued away from your game a little Good. bit i don't <laughs> want to talk about it anymore but, um, <laughs> well will you promise to come back and talk to us some more near near release yeah because we want to we want to hear more well hopefully we had a show you some i to show you that would be awesome saying. yeah that would be awesome